Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in. Hope everybody is settling in. Uh, you've had a good week, winding down Friday. Don't know about you, but I'll be back in the seat on tomorrow. Uh, we have an episode of The Teachers. That one's gonna be hot. Uh, uh, a frat brother of Kevin Samuels, uh, who at one point was sort of backing him now, is calling him out on some things uh, that he's doing that's unethical. Uh, and obviously, you know, uh, one half of the teachers is a capo. So uh, there's all this stuff going on. Uh, I'm going to be there to provide another. Uh, uh, point of view in the sense of it all and uh, what's going on and uh, the dangers of having someone who's really not an expert at something uh, claiming to be an expert at something and giving out advice that's actually damaging but I'm going to talk about it from a perspective and I'm going to give it there I'm going to try to keep it as straight and clean as possible people know exactly how I feel about this I've been uh, very clear on it uh, But That's going to be that uh, Dr. Blanchard uh, wanted to bring uh, This gentleman on He's a very accomplished gentleman in his own right uh, And he's going to come on and talk about What he's doing uh, And why he Feels the way he feels That's going to be that But uh, Before I forget We still need your support We are trailing major to Major uh, in uh, our fundraising attempts for Black Man Lead. We've got to do a better job in that area. So I'm asking you to support the work we're doing. If you are familiar with what we're doing, uh, definitely uh, show love and show support if you believe in what we're doing. Now, for those who don't understand what we're doing, we're in the middle of a series right now that kind of talks about the importance of black manhood and the, uh, the measure of a man uh, in his role specifically as a husband and as a father uh, and why we tend to underestimate the role of father and we tend to end up in bad situations because we choose we tend to choose mates based off our physical attraction and never really give consideration to whether they're going to make good parents and that's both men and women so we're going to talk about that this is part two of the measure of a man um, and yesterday, what we did is we laid the foundation. Uh, we talked about, uh, we laid the foundation. We talked about the five P's of uh, black manhood. We talked about uh, being a protector, being a provider, being a promoter, being a priest in the home and being a prophet or the one who speaks and declares things over their wife and their children. And so you're talking about a protector, a provider, a promoter, a priest, and a prophet. We're not talking religiously at all. We may use religious references because people understand them, but we're talking from a practical, spiritual, emotional, psychological perspective, and ultimately to create the proper social reality. Um, and yes, I am highly in tune with the Most High. Uh, I think relig religion has really diluted sp spirituality to a point that we have no power. So I want to make that clear. Have nothing against faith in God. I just have a problem when religion is guiding you and religion isn't serving you. And, and, and there's a point to that. But anyway, so let's talk about today. We're going to talk about being a protector. Uh, one of the things is because of the commodification of men in general and the hyper commodification of the black man, everybody is judged based on their bank account. Everybody is judged based on their ability to pay all of the bills. Everybody is judged on that. So what you end up with is a bunch of men looking to accumulate things and to increase their ability to spend money, but not knowing how to effectively be a man because being a man is more than what you bring to the table in the way of money as is being a provider is far more than simply providing material uh, 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 material uh, resources uh, to your family. That's definitely a part of it, but it's so much more than that. So 
what I te what I teach uh, young black boys is your first and and preeminent responsibility as a black male is that of a protector. And here is the first reason why protector stands out in front. Because when you don't protect something, it does not feel safe. If it does not feel safe, it can't operate in its fullness. That way it is diminished. And if anything under your cover is diminished, it's your responsibility. So first and foremost, you protect. You protect and you provide safety. You provide an environment of safety. Now, now also, let, let's not lose the connectivity here. Being a provider is a part of protection. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to slide that. I don't want want to make it seem like okay that you can. All your protection is here and in the physical realm, but you're not pr protecting by providing uh, water, lights, gas, things that are essential to the safety of the home and to the fullness in the floor of the home. Uh, children can't. Uh, and I've, I do that, and I know this because why? I, I worked with kids. I've worked, my, me and my brother, uh, my brother who's my former mentee, he's my best friend now. Uh, he's like fam, so I'll call him my brother. My brother, Michael Jordan. We literally worked in, in Houston with com, in a community where that was an entire community at a middle school that we were gonna use for a fundraising event. We were gonna use the auditorium for a fundraising event. That was literally, um, an entire community where the children and their families were living in a uh, condemned apartment complex. And so we went in initially because that we know that they, they were talking about the kids were homeless, I mean hungry, and they didn't, you know, when, you, when you're hungry, you don't learn as well. You, it's hard to focus when you're hungry. It's hard to focus. But what we found out is we were getting food and we were giving it to these kids and they were taking it to homes that didn't have a refrigerator, didn't have running water, didn't have any way to keep the food or cook the food. And it was it became a new point, but we didn't know. So we got to sit down with the counselor and the principal and a couple of other teachers. And literally we had a moment that was so intense that it wasn't a dry in the room. That's how bad it was. So I'm telling you that there is a problem when you don't have the capacity to provide. Now I can tell you that the vast majority of these families were missing a man. And what happens when you remove the man, when well, you remove the primary source of the essential needs, it doesn't mean I, I am not one that believes that a man who can't pay all the bills is a man, but a man who doesn't desire to pay all the bills isn't a man. Now, he may not have the money. There will be times that you may have a man whose wife out earns him. But his goal should be to pay everything. His goal should be to make sure that she's working because she wants to. Because that's her passion. That's what she loves to do. That's her way of serving in this world. Not because if she doesn't do it, the family's going to fold. I do believe that. I do believe that you got to have that. Now, here's the thing. If you've got a good woman and she knows how to sew into you, and I don't mean with her money, I mean with, with, with the right words of encouragement, with the right level of faith, with the right level of support, if you have a desire to take care of that family, you will get there. You will get there because you will build together. She will grow you. You will find out what you need to become in order to have what you need to have. You will go out and you will make it happen. That's what men do. Okay, now, that's out of the way. Here's what I get, need you to get to understand. Now that we got the whole provider thing, and that's going to be tomorrow. We're going to talk about the provider thing tomorrow. We're going to get really deep off into the provider thing tomorrow. But look, here's the protector thing. That has to be a physical covering. That means that everybody in your house, your wife and your children, and you got to understand, we tend to divide, define men primarily by two things. And we are failing because we do that. We, we, we define them first and foremost by how much money they have. Second of all, we define them about by, by, by their relationship with their significant other, their woman, their girlfriend, their wife. Uh, what we're failing at is we're not defining men as fathers. We're not measuring men by how they father their children, how safe are they, their, their children, what kind of bond and connectivity do they have with their children. Are they growing their children? See, the thing is, there's so much more to uh, being a father than putting clothes on the back of your child or paying child support. 
you know, you, you, you have to ask how many, what was, what was the last time your son, as a man, what was the last time your son heard you say, I love you, or I'm proud of you? What was the last time your daughter heard you say, she's beautiful? And how consistent is that? How often is that? How often are you checking in on them to see how they're doing? I had this thing that I did with my daughters. They had a similar thing with my son, but I had a different thing with my daughters. Um, and eventually I got busted because I got a lot of daughters. But started with the oldest, who's 36 now. When she became old enough to talk and actually have a conversation, um, probably around three, maybe two, I started, every time I was here, no matter what, we cross paths in the house 20 times during the day, I'm gonna do it 20 times during the day. But when I, when I see, every time I see her, it's, hey girl, who's the most beautiful girl in the world? Say, I am daddy, I am. That's right, you are. What can you do if you put your mind to it? She didn't have a clue what I was talking about. The seed was being planted. What can you do if you put your mind to it? I can do anything, daddy, the sky's the limit. I can do anything. Every time I saw her, I did it with all my girls. Who's the most beautiful girl? Where I am. And then I got caught. So then I had to explain how all of them were the most beautiful girl in the world. And I did it. Because all of them were uniquely different and uniquely beautiful. And in that way, they were the most beautiful girl in the world. And so I got away with it. But the goal was to plant the seed. So that when a young buck came along and dropped that line, man, you fine. Man, you beautiful. Okay, you know, I know that. What else you got? What else are you bringing to the table besides compliments? I, I appreciate the compliment, thank you. But what else are you bringing to the table? I, I told a story of this before. My 31-year-old, when she was in the ninth grade, one my sister thought for just, you know, because uh, she wasn't really actively in a relationship with a little boy it wasn't I got a boyfriend thing that dads just dread around this time of their daughter's life it wasn't anything going on I must just say I'm kind of concerned uh about her I'm like why well, you know I'm thinking maybe she's gay no you know I'm like okay what makes you think that you know and she said because you know, all the girls our age, a boy crazy. We never hear her talking about a boy. We never hear her on the phone with a boy whenever she's with me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, why don't you go ask her? I'm, I'm certain she'll tell you why she doesn't have a boyfriend. And so she goes and asks. She says, I, I want a boyfriend. She said, I like boys, but until I meet someone who treats me like my daddy, I'm good. Uh, she's married to her first. My oldest daughter married to her first. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that I did everything right. Doesn't mean I have this magic potion. I'm this great dad. That's not what this is about. What this is about is there are certain things that have so much gravity and weight that is missing in the home because we're not measuring men based on how well they father. We've got them convinced that they're good dads if they are paying child support and maybe paying insurance and maybe picking up the kids over the weekend and, and taking them out and having fun with them, that's not parenting. This is what happens though. When you sit up and you don't have a full understanding of who you are as a man and she doesn't have a full understanding of who she is as a woman and you've been trained to judge one another based on a few particular characteristics and those things have no longevity or far reach because they are solely uh, encapsulated in what's happening now the chemistry now so you end up bedding with someone that doesn't have the capacity to procreate and then sustain see that's something that you have to understand that a power that 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 a man in his truest nature is a father now this is the part that really gets crazy he's a father even to, even to his wife He's a father to his wife, not in the sense of bossing her around or lording over, but, but in being her covering and a protection. If you sit up and if you want to take uh, ancient scripture, we can use the Bible. It says that a man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Where does it say that a woman ever leaves her father and mother? Uh, 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 especially leaves, it doesn't. Why? Because she moves from under the cover. In traditional marriage, 
The daughter was in the home until she was taken under the covering. She wasn't out in her own apartment. She wasn't out doing her own thing by her own house. She was under the covering because that was a, a, a place of safety and security and protection and identity and immersion within a particular value, <coughs> particular value system. So what happened is, if you look at the way weddings weddings go, the the husband, the, the the future husband, is standing at the altar, and he's waiting, and the father is walking the daughter down and what he does he hands her to the husband and at that moment there is a changing of the guard where he is now saying it's your responsibility to pick up where I left off it's your responsibility to take her and love her the way I loved her and 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 and, and a man's role whether we get it or not we've moved into such these we've gotten so caught up in liberation that we've lost our role sensitivity, but, but also besides being a protector, the provider, the husband is also a teacher. And if you look at some of the ancient words, but see, we also have to see the husband as a father, because when we see the husband as a father, we can look at the ancient words of father and find out that the father, both, both words in, in the Old Testament and New Testament have a father, because you, you understand. Uh, we, we who come from uh, Jew, Judeo Christian backgrounds or Abrahamic faith backgrounds tend to use the word father to re uh, refer to God. Uh, and that same word or that same title was given to the man. Nowhere in scripture do we see God referring to himself as the mother. God is referring to the father. And there's a reason for that. If you study the Hebrew word for father, the, the Greek word for father, as a, if, uh, as a matter of fact, you find out that it means source. It is a source of something. It is the beginning of something. It is the source of something. It is what released and what is released from that source, what is given from that source has to be sustained. And what happens is the father is the initial source. The woman comes from the father. But, and the father is responsible for sustaining what he has released. That's a part of it. That's why a, a, a man has to be a provider. He has to be responsible for what he sourced. What he released, he now must sustain. Well, a part of that is cultivating. It is growing. It is enhancing. It is uh, expanding. So a part of the responsibility of the husband, as well as the father in the home, is to grow, to teach, to lead, not in the way of trying to manipulate, overpower, be overbearing and bossy, but to lead in a way that takes a person from something that's great to something that's greater to something that's even greater until it becomes phenomenal. It is leading them into a greater space, into a more powerful space. It is not about suffering through an entire lifetime. It is not about sitting there, <coughs> sitting there and not seeing progress. It uh, One of the things that women should know instead of asking a man when you meet him where he works what he drives what he lives you should be asking him what the vision is for his life what is the vision can he sit down and articulate where he plans on being three years from now five years from now ten years from now because that tells you if you fit into the vision he has if he can't with great specificity articulate the vision then he's not prepared to be a man if you can't see him diligently in his work and I'm not talking about his job when you can't see him diligently in his work and consistently pushing towards what he is in this world and, and fully developing and becoming something greater within himself and a drive to be that great person he's not ready On the flip side, men, when you meet a woman, <coughs> there's a bunch of things that, here's, here's the hard part because we've really been trained 
to have ready-made situations and we never want to build anything. We never want to work on anything. We, we never want to cultivate anything. And so we end up frustrating. There's a reason why there's a 50% divorce rate in Western culture because we think everything is supposed to be stacked for us when we get it and we don't see the need to invest in it. But let me tell you something. There's a bunch of things that your, your, your natural man is gonna want from a woman that you're gonna immediately, when you see, you're gonna immediately want it. And a lot, a lot of it won't be there. You wanna know why? It's because you have to put it there. That you literally have to invest in her. You have to put, that's something that you're responsible. You are a cultivator. You are a source. That's what you are. That's who you are. You are a source and you are a sustainer and you are a, a, a cultivator and you expand, you grow, you teach. Everybody in your life is supposed to be better because you're there. And so what you have to understand, there are some things in her that she's going to need you to bring out of her. Oh, no, this, this is probably not going to sit well with a bunch of people because everybody wants to complain about what somebody else isn't, but they never want to talk about what they need to be. And so what I'm here to talk to you about is that being a man comes with a great responsibility. See, if I want to be the king, that's the, pre, that's the preeminent. There's nothing greater than the king in the kingdom. The king is, is the preeminent in the kingdom. <laughs> but there's a responsibility that comes with that preeminence. There's some work that comes with that preeminence. The buck stops with you if you are the preeminent. You don't get to blame the queen when the king kingdom gets shabby and shady and things start to fall apart. You don't get to blame the kids because everything, you have to know how to hold it together. You got to be strong in that. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some bad fruit out there, but what I'm telling you is that if you have your mind on right, if you're doing the things you should be doing, gee whiz, if you're doing the things you should be doing, then you will do a better job of choosing. So you won't just be choosing with your loin. You, just, you won't just be choosing from your place of lust. You will be choosing from a place of responsibility, knowing this is the woman who's going to rear my children. This is the woman who's going to run my household. This is the woman who is going to provide the spiritual environment that I must submerse myself in after going to war and to battle every day to be a provider, to be a protector, to be a nurturer, to sustain this thing that I have sourced. You are going to have to understand when you choose something, it's got to be capable of being what you need it to be. You can't choose it based on some superficial idea and then expect it to have depth and substance. No, 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 no. Oh, we're talking about being men. Nobody wants to hear this because I've seen way too many men whining and complaining about what a woman won't let them do. That's the first sign that you ain't ready, son. While a woman can definitely create some hindrances and some, some challenges, she can't stop you from being a man. She can't stop you from exerting your force of spiritual energy and substance and, 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 and sustaining energy. You can't sit up and tell me that you don't have the wherewithal inside of you to step out and be. You just expected it to be easier. You expected it to be, I'm the man and this is how it's gonna be. Women have a tendency to respond to you based off of the level of security you provide for them. The more comfortable you make her, the more she sinks into you. And what you have to understand is every time a man comes along and he can't provide that security, and then he further exacerbates that by manipulating, controlling, and abusing her, it makes it that much more challenging for you to come along and, and, and literally retrieve her and 
restore her. And that's the problem. Nobody wants to put that work in. Nobody wants to sit there and put that work in. They're expecting to get a healed version after generations of trauma. There's work to be done. And ladies, no man wants to be around women whose first inkling is to take shots at him, to tear him down. Don't think for a second that men aren't seen all of the stuff that you readily say. Now, if you are done with men and you want to go at men like that and you don't ever want a man again, keep doing what you're doing. Keep making black men the target for all of your anger and your frustration. Keep doing it because what's going to happen is you're going to create such an energy within yourself. You're going to create such a psych psychological reality that you won't be able to receive a man and a man is going to observe you at a distance and won't not want anything to do with you because that's toxic so with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get off of here and get to where i need to get but i just had to tell you uh you know share this with you this is part two of measure of a man protector. Tomorrow we'll talk about the provider. On that note, I'm out of here.